Hey YouTube, it is me again with another YouTube video and today we are going to be taking a look at what is by far one of my favorite models I have ever built. So today we're going to be taking a look at the PP-19 Bison. It's an interesting Russian submachine gun and it takes a helical magazine that doesn't jeopardize the overall length or shape or any um, type of thing that might mess up movement with it reflexes with it um because it takes a helical magazine and uh there's actually two types of this russian model you have both the pp19 bison which is basically just a converted um what you call it uh ak74u um, it takes the same type of AK-74U stock, it takes the same handguard style, the same muzzle brake design, same sight systems. The uh, only interesting thing is it takes a uh, helical magazine that you see here. And uh, as you can see, this one is the 64 round one. There's a, another cartridge that runs in the PP-19 Bison and it goes up to 54 rounds, I think. Um, but yeah. And then you also have the PP90M1. Now the, the difference between the PP19 Bison and the PP90M1 is that the PP90M or um, yeah, the PP90 in one has a different design to it. Overall, it's a completely different gun. It's the same basic features. It's got the helical magazine up here. And then it's just short, compact overall. But the difference between the two is that the uh, this one is its own gun, and then the PP19 is actually kind of like a conversion for the AKS74U. Uh, also, the charging handle is right here above the barrel, in case you guys didn't know. Uh, that's the PP90M1, though. Now then back to what we were actually looking at. So this is kind of like a preview picture that I did um, on the blog. And this was the 2nd of the th this month, which is July. Um, it's currently the 8th and it's been sitting on my laptop and my sister's been using the laptop phone charger or her core charger. So I haven't been able to get my laptop up and running. Um, but I finally got it up and running today and I transferred the files over to a Google Doc so I could finally... Uh, get this file opened up on my main computer, which is the main computer that I show all my mocks to you guys on. So without further ado, introducing the PP-19 Bison. So as you can see, this is by far one of the most detailed mocks I have ever built. In terms of functions, it is also highly detailed. So we're going to start with the stock and make our way forward as we usually do with all of my mocks. So on the stock, we have kind of like an AK-74U style stock. You got the butt pad with the uh, rubber on it. You got the angle to it, and then the uh, just a straight piece of metal. And then you got this dark gray cheek rest here. It's got some nice detail on it because it has a very nice curve to it. And then it also has the little cutouts here just to make it look a lot better instead of it just being a square. The stock does fold over to the side. Now then the interesting about the interesting thing about this stock is instead of making it just a pin fold stock like I usually do, I went ahead and I also made it a uh, you push this button in, just like the real model, you push this button in, and the internal mechanism releases the lever and then lets the stock swing. Um, so the internal mechanism I will show you guys is fairly simple. You have your button here which pushes on this bar here. And when this bar is pushed on, it's on a swivel point that allows this end of the bar to come towards you. So when this end of the bar comes towards you, this piece right here is allowed to swing free of this cutout right here. Now then, basically how's the, how this works is, uh, there's a gonna be a mechanical pencil spring inside of here. I've already measured it. It works perfectly fine. And it will force it will push on this side of the pivot point, forcing this bar to lock into place behind the actual block right here. So when you go to fold the stock over this way, the block is going to hit the pin and it won't be allowed to um, fold over. 
So you have to push the button in order to fold the stock. Now then the interesting thing about that mechanism is it completely messes up the actual folding process. So I am forced to basically just disassemble the pivot points out of the stock. Oop, crap. And then grab the stock and flip it around. And then put it on like so. Uh, as you can see, on either side of the stock, there is a hole that's just there so that if you built the model in real life, you could have these pins and you can um, actually put a pin inside of those holes uh, just to hold the stock on some more because obviously a mechanical spring or a uh, mechanical pencil spring isn't going to be that strong. So just to help out the stock mechanism some more, there would be a pin there. So as you can see, the stock does fold over and it makes a much more compact weapon. Uh, obviously, you don't have the stock hanging out over the back end over here. Now then, what's kind of unique about this weapon is that the magazine is known to actually get in the way of the folding stock. And that was no exception here. So I had to actually cut out a small 2x4 portion on the magazine to get the stock to fit where it needs to fit. Um, so it's just living up to the reputation of the PP-19 Bison. There was also a hole right here, and there also should be a hole right here in this little one by one piece right there. Basically what happens is when the stock folds over, it uh, connects to a pin that's on the upper receiver right about here. Uh, obviously the way this stock works, I can't do that. Um, so there, I measured it so that a pin in the actual cheek rest itself would fit up against the upper receiver right here where this hole is above the trigger group and would actually work with the cheek rest to hold the stock in place. Now then moving on to the pistol grip. As you can see, we got an urban ergonomic pistol grip. It's got a black stripe going down the middle. It's a dark gray color. I like the dark gray furniture. Sling mount, by the way. It's got the working trigger, of course, as does all of my models, with the rubber band pieces inside. As you can see, there's a rubber band hook mount here, and then the other rubber band would latch on in front of there. Uh, just so you guys can see that better. It's got the working safety slash fire selector. So you would put it up right here in safety. And basically what that does is it prevents your bolt from coming all the way back so it can't chamber around. And then you would move it down. Full auto comes first by the way. So full auto, semi-auto, all the way down. Now then I heard a rumor about these that the fire selector is occasionally loose. Um, so you could be shooting in full auto and it would get knocked down the semi-auto. But I don't know if that's true or not because Americans can't really fire this weapon because Russians are stingy about their um, weapons. So I don't really know. Talking about the newly designed upper receiver, as you can see, there has been some extensive reshaping done. Uh, first of all, I fixed up the dust cover in the back here just to make it look better. I fixed up the top to make it look more like an AK-47 styled weapon. Uh, it's got the curves to it now instead of just the uh, plain kind of flat top rail system. I fixed up the bolt as well to also be more like an AK-47. It's got the curve to it or the slant to it and it's basically just a 45 degree 45 degree uh, angle slope and it's just more realistic to the actual uh, mock itself and then of course you got your charging handle which is curved so it's provided more comfort basically and then you got the magwell now then here's what's interesting about the PP90 or PP19 Bison it still works off of the same type of mag release as the uh, uh, AKS AK-74U. Basically, it's an AK-74U that's been converted to shoot helical magazines and a different caliber. So you got the mag release extended magazine so that you can kind of tap the front of this with your next magazine in order to load it. Uh, it also locks into place, and what do I mean by that? It's simple. You have a part on the magazine that actually fits right up on top of the mag release so that when this magazine has its weight and it's pushing down the mag release won't let it go uh, down all the way because this bar is in the way 
So when you push on the mag release here, the bar will swing out of the way and your magazine will drop down. I also have a more realistic fake bullet up on top. I call them 3D instead of the uh, normal 2D. Basically, it's just the 9x19 Parabellum round that the uh, gun uses. It's got the yellow casing and then the dark blue ammo tip that most Russian guns take. And that's pretty much the upper receiver in stock and handguard. Now then, let's talk about sights. These are, of course, just standard iron sights. They are adjustable. As you can see, you can look down them. It makes a great sight picture. And all of the uh, Russian sights, the AK sights, are adjustable for windage. So I have these on uh, hinge pieces so that you can pick them up, put them down, anything you need to do. They're also attached to the actual handguard themselves instead of the upper receiver. The only spot that they're attached on the upper receiver is this piece right here where those two studs can be seen. Now then we're going to move on to the uh, muzzle brake and front iron sight and then the magazine and then the handguard last because there's a lot to discuss about the handguard itself. So we have the second uh, sling mount here. We have the AK-74U styled muzzle brake. We also have the iron sight, which um, it's supposed to be more or so along the lines of like touching the uh, actual... Oh, I don't have the page open. Never mind. It's supposed to kind of be over one more stud and actually touching the um, handguard itself, but I could have not do that with such a limited amount of space for the uh, barrel design. Uh, so I kind of just left it a stud out, but it still looks pretty good, so it's not too bad. The uh, front sight is these two crescent pieces with the front post. There's just a, kind of like a screw detail on the side. And then you have your barrel itself underneath all this with the mounting bracket in place for the magazine. So if you guys have never seen a PP-19 Bison reloaded, basically what happens is you would release the magazine back here and your magazine will swing down like this. And when your magazine swings down like this, you pull back on it and it releases out of the pivot point here. And then to reload, you kind of come in at an angle, push up into the pivot point, and then slide your magazine up into the mag well until it locks in place with the mag release. So basically what I did here was just measure out a enough room for a pin to come up between the uh, post here so that when you put your magazine in, it swivels freely instead of just kind of wobbling around. And it's also a much stronger design than using, uh, say, pieces like these. These pieces have a tendency to fall out. The actual pins themselves have more studs to grip onto, so you don't have that much of an issue. And plus, space was a major priority, so I had to do that. Now then, the helical magazine is in a drab olive green color. Uh, some people call it OD green, I just call it olive green or uh, baby barf green. And uh, it's a helical magazine, which means it's in a circle, as you can see. I tried to do the uh, like standard Lego, trying to get the perfect circle down. And uh, it looks pretty great, other than this one gap for the stock. I really like it. And in the front here, you actually have the winding mechanism for the spring inside the magazine to push the rounds into the... Uh, actual teeth to allow the weapon to cycle. Uh, it does spin, so all you got to do is basically uh, grab it and spin it, and then you are kind of winding the magazine. Just a nice effect. And like I said, I tried to capture the overall helical effect of the magazine, and it worked out pretty well. I'm pretty glad. Now then moving on into the final part of the gun. Here we have the handguard, and this was by far the hardest part of the mock because I wanted to do something different for the actual air vents. I wanted to get them as close to oval as possible. So as you can see, they are pretty much spot on oval. And uh, that was by far one of the hardest things I have ever done in my entire life. So in case you guys were wondering how I did it, I was going to go ahead and show you guys. And uh, when I open up the top of this handguard, you're going to probably freak out because it seems like a mess. But once I explain it, it shouldn't be too bad. So it just looks like an absolute mess down in here. Um, but 
I can explain it, so no worries. So basically what happened is I took advantage of these pieces up front here. These pieces, as you can see, have... Why can't I place it on top of something? Can I place it? Okay, whatever. These pieces have three studs available on the back here. So I took advantage of that, and I used them to place these arch pieces, like so. And then I built these arch pieces so that these pieces right here will accept one stud end and then I can flip the arch piece and then put it on and then do the uh, same uh, middle part down here and then I just put these squares on to get rid of these studs and it makes a very nice oval that was great for the first one but I did not know how to get to the second one because to get to the second one I had to flip studs a whole 180 degrees so to do that I took two of these pieces right here I took one and put it like that and took the other one and put it facing them and then I have uh, two pins between the two to keep them in place and then I put smooth tiles on the face itself right here to get them to line up perfectly so I wasn't wasting that much space and then I pushed them together as close as I could possibly get it and I repeated the process down the line and then put some black inserts on the inside in the middle and it looks fantastic so I absolutely love the looks of the ovals it's a kind of a difficult uh, building technique but it really pays off when you know how to do it uh, the black stripe down the bottom is just to match the kind of furniture that I have on the back here with the other black stripe. This one is also in a dark gray, and it also fits the curves of the handguard quite well. And that pretty much sums up the rest of this model. So this model will be added to my website quite soon. I will probably get it uploaded, I don't know, um, a week tops. Uh, I have a lot going on right now. Um, trying to see if I can't get things to slow down a bit so I can actually uh, get some more things done. But I don't know. Uh, currently it's 1.19 in the morning and I got maybe an hour left before I'm just dead tired and need to sleep. Um, so I'll see if I can't do something within the next hour uh, that's actually productive. Uh, anyhow, that's pretty much it for this mock. Like I said, thank you guys for watching. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe for more videos like this one. If you guys have time to blow, why don't you check out my website, bluejinthemaster.weebly.com. As always, there will be a link in the description below. And that's pretty much it. So thanks you guys for watching. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe.